Hello everybody, good afternoon and welcome to the United Stands. I'm Mark Goldbridge. This is your latest transfer news with Fabrizio Romano. How are you doing Fabrizio? All good, thank you. Always a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, good to have you on. Um, it feels like there's a lot going on in the transfer window at the moment. I know you've been busy talking about Alexi McAllister and others today, but uh, we're here to talk about Manchester United. And uh, I want to focus on Italy first and a few players from there. But the big question I always get asked when you come on the show is just, um, is there any sort of update on the sale? I know this morning there was talk of Qatar maybe walking away. Um, and does this have any impact on Man United's transfer spend? Because they seem to be working quite quickly on deals, yet we've not been sold. No, at the moment, still no update with both Ineos and the Qatari group confirming that they're still waiting and they're still uh, into the into the process. So we have to wait again on the Glazers. I think your second question is is the key question in this moment for Manchester United. Uh, yes, this is having a big, big impact on the transfer market of Man United. They're trying to do what they can, like a standing contrast, as they did with the Diogo Dalot and, uh, and, and this kind of movements. But to go and sign big players... You need the support of the club, of course, uh, of the owners. And I think the message from American Trang is very clear when he's going out in press conference and saying many times, we need investment, we need new signings to be at top, top level. I think the message is very clear. Um, let's go straight into transfer news then, um, or updates. Um, we're going to go to Italy. Obviously, that's where you are. That's probably where you, 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 you pretty much... Well, you're pretty much the best when it comes to transfer news anyway. But hopefully with Italy, uh, you probably know a little bit more than most as well. Thank you, thank you. Um, Rasmus Hoyland, um, there's a lot over the last few days in the UK been built up around Rasmus Hoyland. Um, obviously, um, the Italian league finished last night. He was playing for Atalanta. Um, agency potentially linking in. You've been saying for months on this show that he needs to sort his agents out first. Do you yeah. see Rasmus Hoyland as a real target for Manchester United this summer or is it maybe not going to happen? I think they will have um, in the list some priority options, as we said many times with Eric Kane, with Victor Osiman, so big names, top names. And then you always have some backup option. Of course, Rasmus Oilund is a fantastic talent, but he's not Harry Kane. This is very clear. He's very young. It takes time to, to arrive at that level. But Manchester United are, we can say, informed on the conditions of the deal. What happened recently in the, lap, in the last uh, two weeks, 10 days, I would say, they had some conversations with people close to Rasmus Oilund to be informed also on the conditions of the deal, how much would take to sign the player in the summer. They know that Atlanta hope to keep the player, but from what I understand, the player would be really keen on a move to Manchester United. So Rasmus Hoylund, we know he's Manchester United fan. He, is, he was Manchester United fan as a kid, so this was uh, public in some interviews. But also today, he has this dream to play in the Premier League, and so I think he would be keen on the move. And Manchester United are well informed on that. Now it's about Atalanta. It's about uh, Atalanta price tag because they want around 60, 65 million euros. So not an easy negotiation at all. And also we have to understand if Manchester United will be able to sign one of the top targets. Uh, we mentioned Kane, Oziman, and these kind of players. Or if they will go for a younger striker. So let's see the domino of strikers, how that will go. But Hoylund is a player that Manchester United appreciate for sure. And he's a player that they are following and they are very well informed on the conditions of the deal. Do you think they could go for two strikers, Manchester United? Or are they just looking for one at the moment? I think the priority is one striker, one midfielder, one centre-back. And then, in case they have some budget left, some opportunity on the market, they will explore possibilities for a second striker. But I don't see them starting with a, with that kind of striker. I think they will try to start in a different way. Um, just sticking with Italy, because it's easier. Kim Min Jae, loads and loads of Italian reports. You know more than us whether we should take those Italian reports seriously. Um, lots of them say, lots of them talking about wages and deals done and all that. Um, obviously, this can't happen till July anyway. Um, yeah. Would you put Manchester United as a, really in that race for Kim Min Jae or is it just paper talk in Italy? No, Manchester United are in the race for sure because uh, they sent their scouts in October, in November, then the player has always been monitored by Manchester United in the second part of the season. So for sure they are in the race, for sure they are in contact with people close to, to Kim Min Jae. So they are very well informed also in this case on the conditions of the deal. In this case, as we always mentioned, there is a release clause. It's close to 50 million euros. It's for the first few days of July, so it's not going to take long to make a decision on, uh, on Kim Min Jae. It's also true that Napoli are still trying to extend his contract, but they feel that this is going to be very complicated. So May United have this possibility to go for Kim. They're speaking to the agents. Let me say that, as of today, while we're speaking, from what I'm told, this is not a done deal. This is not something guaranteed. May United had some conversations with Kim. Uh, let me say that Champions League football makes a difference because Kim wants to play, play Champions League football. So this is why the deal was a bit slow. In March, in April, he wanted to be 100% sure of the Champions League possibility with Manchester United. Now the conversation is 
uh, is ongoing with May United. Also Newcastle have an interesting team. So both clubs are into the race. Let's see how that will evolve. You know, when there is a release close, this could change in 24 hours. But for sure, Manchester United are interested. And Kim is one of the names that we have to mention in the, for the defense for May United. Let me add one thing uh, about centre-backs. I'm told that they are also exploring the French market. They feel that in that market, there are many interesting options. So they've sent their scouts multiple times to follow uh, French players. And so if it's not going to be Kim, it could be someone from the French league. But Kim is one of the options for sure. Maybe keep an eye on French centre-backs then, everybody. We'll see about that. Um, and then into the midfield. I mean, I suppose, look, I don't think there's any point talking about Rabiot because his contract isn't until the end of the month. But um, we're hearing a lot about Declan Rice, a lot about Mason Mount. Um, one question I wanted to ask, and I think a lot of people in the chat would say as well, we know that Alexi McAllister has gone to Brighton for a very good price. Um, Casido, have we, we've spoken about him a few times and we know that we, he was a player that United looked at a long time ago. But we never hear about Manchester United and Casido. We're just hearing about Declan Rice. Is it really just Rice and Rabiot at the moment? Or are United actually looking at a Casido or anybody else? No, I would keep it open, honestly. Uh, I would keep it open. It's not only Declan Rice. Uh, for Casido, I keep saying that um, Chelsea want him, uh, especially after what happened with Ugarte in the last 24 hours. But they already wanted him before this Ugarte story uh, with, uh, with Paris Saint-Germain. So Chelsea are on it for Caicedo. But May United also appreciate the player and had some contacts. So I would keep the race open for Caicedo. We know Arsenal always had this interest in the player. They had to be rejected in January. So the Caicedo story is open. I think now Brighton will try to fix the situation with McAllister this week. And then starting from next week, they will open conversations to understand the future of Caicedo. From what I know, Roberto De Zerbi told him after extending the contract in February after the January transfer window, OK, extend the contract. Uh, so we will be safe, we can uh, improve your salary, but then we will sell you in the summer in case we will receive important proposals. So now there is this pact between the Zerbi and Caicedo, but he's a name that I will keep at the moment open on the market, with Chelsea really pushing, because Chelsea really likes the player, but it's not something done yet. So let's see what happens there. I think for the midfielder and May United, the situation is very open, and then there is the Mason Mount story, which is really concrete in this moment. That, that deal, uh, Fabrizio, looks like if we're going to get any deal done quickly, Mason Mount's not part of the England squad. He's finished the season. Chelsea need money. It's one way or another that looks like it will get sorted probably the quickest at the moment. One yeah, for sure. For sure, Manchester United are pushing a lot behind the scenes because they have they know they have to be careful also in the public situation of this, of this deal. Uh, it's not easy also to negotiate with Chelsea. The real issue is with Chelsea. We know that... Uh, from what I'm told, it's not about agreeing personal terms, but this is not a problem. May United had conversations with people close to Mason Mount, and they feel that they can reach an agreement on personal terms in very fast and easy way. So the player would be keen on the move. He's attracted by the idea of football of Eric Ten Hag. So Mason Mount is open to the move. It's about Chelsea. Chelsea are still asking for 80 million euros at least as fee for Mason Mount. And for Manchester United, this is way too much for a player who's out of contract next summer. So I think now is typical kind of strategy. Uh, gain with Manchester United who want to pay less because he's out of contract next summer but with Chelsea who are trying to get their best from a player who is made in Cobham so it's also not easy for them to accept to let him go and he's not extending the contract but this is the reality now it's a strategy game but Man United are there Man United are confident because they know the player wants to join them so I think Mason Mount is a really concrete story waiting for Chelsea because now it's crucial to understand when Chelsea if Chelsea would change their position um, and then uh, just on the goalkeeper, I would be wrong if I didn't ask you this because there's a lot of people who blamed David De Gea for the FA Cup final. Um, not myself, but there you go. Um, Costa from Porto, the Anderlet goalkeeper. It's very highly likely United will bring a goalkeeper in. I think there was a story about, well, we'll talk about Dean Henderson in a minute, but is that Costa, is that just a pipe dream for United fans? Is it more likely we end up going for a goalkeeper like the Anderlet goalkeeper a little bit cheaper? Yeah, I think that kind of solution, uh, I would say a smart solution. So maybe a young goalkeeper uh, from a league where price tags are not so expensive. So something smart in terms also of budget. Uh, I don't think Man United are going to extend the contract of David De Gea and sign a top goalkeeper like Diogo, who would cost something close to 70, 75 million euros. So Costa is really appreciated by Man United. We say here multiple times that they have had conversations with people close to him. They are following the player with their uh, scouting department, but at the same time, it's not something advanced because Porto only sell for release closes. And at the moment, this is not the case for Man United to go there and pay 75 million euros. So I think this will be 
kind of smart signing, a uh, young goalkeeper from that kind of league, maybe Belgian league, maybe Dutch league again, with Eric Ten Hag, who knows the league very well, trying to find an opportunity and put a second goalkeeper who can create competition with uh, David De Gea, who is close to extending his contract because that is really, really close. Do you think there's any prospect that David De Gea doesn't sign that contract? So there's a few people asking. I, I don't think that I think he'll sign it, but he's know. very advanced. He's very, very advanced. Then uh, you know, in football, until they sign the contracts, everything remains open, and even if there is one percent. Uh, chance, but at the moment he's very advanced, and all the parties was the same, want the same because David De Gea wants to stay at United, and United want to keep David De Gea and to create competition. I think also Eric Tenak in that interview he had, if I'm not wrong, with the Times, he was very clear in saying that I can't guarantee to uh, David De Gea to be the first goalkeeper. To say that while the season is still on because they had the final to play, I think this is a very strong message to create some positive pressure around the goalkeeper. So. I think the idea is very clear to to bring in a new important second goalkeeper for the future. Um, just a couple of just we'll just talk about players uh, potentially leaving. Um, story coming in, um, I think it was in the mail in in the UK in the last hour actually that Nottingham Forest have got a deal in place for Dean Henderson. Is that a deal that you think Manchester United won't waste this this summer? They'll just get on with that deal. Dean Henderson probably wants to leave himself as well. Yeah, it's close. This is close. This is something that has been discussed for weeks. I would say two, three weeks in discussion between Nottingham Forest, May United, the agents of the player. Uh, the player wants to go. May United want to accept that proposal. So I think this is just a matter of time to complete the final details. And then Dean Henderson has a concrete chance to join Nottingham Forest. I'm told it's not done yet, but could be done very, very soon. And yes, I think this is good opportunity also for United to make some profit. These kind of deals are going to be crucial for my United this summer because, okay, we know about the striker, we know about the midfielder and also what's going to happen with the centre-back. But in general, to make some money with all these players who are returning from loans and are not part of the Manchester United project is probably the best way to do something extra also in the second part of the transfer window. And um, there was an article in ESPN today talking about Quite a long transfer list. You're right. They said people like Alex Tellers and Eric Bay, but also Harry Maguire was mentioned. Scott McTominay was mentioned. Um, any sort of indication of whether those deals will be open for Manchester United or is it still to be discussed? Yeah, I think there are some situations that will be discussed very soon in terms of days because Eric Ten Hag will have some face-to-face -face meetings with some players, including Harry Maguire. For Harry Maguire, I think there is a concrete chance to go in case they will receive some proposals, they will discuss with the player. But the feeling I have in the last few days is also that Harry Maguire understands that he needs to change if he wants to go to the Euros next summer and be an important player because he can spend another season uh, on the bench. And also important to say that for McTominay is different. For example, I see McTominay in the same situation of Lindelof. He's a player who's appreciated by Eric Ten Hag with many requests because for Lindelof, Inter and Atletico Madrid were really pushing in January, but Ten Hag said no. And again, now Ten Hag would love to keep the player, but the player wants to be on the pitch regularly. So you need a conversation. You need to speak about next season. It's also true next season there is Champions League football, so it's a completely different feeling at Manchester United. But also important to say that for McTominay, Newcastle are still there. Uh, Eddie Howe is a big fan of the player. They have his name in the list again after they tried in January. But for May United at the moment, it's not that easy to go there and sign uh, and sign McTominay. So I think they have to make kind of list of players who are 100% available. And for sure, Alex Tejas will be there. Eric Bailey will be there. I think for Maguire, they are prepared to discuss opportunities and to let him go in case they will receive proposals. So it will be a busy summer with your going and May United. And then to decide on players who could go on loan, because there are many of them, like uh, Fecundo Pellistri, who is discussing a new deal at Manchester United. There is a conversation very advanced, but then he could have the possibility to go on loan. They have to decide on Amad Diallo. So there are many things to do on that kind of players. And one final question for Riccio. I can hear your phone yeah. ringing. Neymar? It's not my phone. I don't like it. All right. Okay. It, it, could, it could be Rasmus Hoyland telling us he, he's coming tonight. <laughs> um, um, Neymar, this is just a final question. Yeah. A few people in the chat talking about Neymar. Is that just... Is he going to leave PSG? Is there any chance he's coming to United or is this just paper? Too? No, to answer your first question, I think there is a concrete chance for him to leave PSG. They are looking at options. Internally, PSG already discussed that. So they consider Neymar as one of the players who could leave the club in the summer. This is not going to be a surprise, I think. But for Manchester United, with the current ownership, so with the Glazers and with the current board, this is not something that they are discussing. So there is not a negotiation between PSG or the agents of Neymar and Manchester United. In case the owners will change, this could be maybe a different kind of scenario. But at the moment, it's just something not concrete. So we have to wait and see on that one. But really, for this uh, project, I would say in general, I, I think Manchester United are going on a different direction. So in case new owners will come, I will try to sign that kind of different player also for 
marketing and this kind of stuff could be one point. But I think the way they have right now with Aitanag is completely different. And so I think they will keep going with that kind of strategy. Fabrizio, it's a pleasure to have you on the show as always. I know you're a busy man. Thank you, Thank you very much for coming on the show. Thanks a lot. And see you soon here as always. Thank you. Thank you, Fabrizio. Take care. Ciao, ciao, ciao. ciao. Um, yeah, so yeah, let me just uh, change this. Uh, he is a very busy man, isn't he, Fabrizio? But a uh, very informed man. And uh, I, I tell you what, there's a few bits to go in through on there. Let me just uh, get the comments back up on the screen. Um, I think of most interest, um, my mind sort of straight away when he was talking about centre backs and Kim Min Jae. I mean, there's some good updates there, but um, nice little bit of um, keep an eye on the French market. Tell me some French centre backs because, um, I mean, look, I, I, if we get Kim Min Jae, we'll never know, but keep an eye out for French centre backs um, in the French league. Um, must admit, I'd be a hypocrite if I started listing them off because, as I've always said, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a farmer's league, but um, McAllister apparently rejected us. I mean, what a deal that is for Liverpool, by the way. It's meant to be around, I, I, I was saying maybe 45, 50. Apparently it's around 40 million that they've got Alexi McAllister for. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable deal there. Um, let's go through it then. So Rabio, we're not going to know till the end of the month. We know that. Kim Min Jae definitely talks there. The Champions League qualification for Manchester United has put us right in the mix. We probably are favourites, but... Um, Obviously, with a release clause, it can all come down to wages. Newcastle are interested, so I, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens with that. Rasmus Hoyland was the was the most interesting one for me. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, Fabrizio, based out in Italy, knows a lot about what's going on in Italy. Rasmus Hoyland, um, according to Fabrizio there, you know, really would be looking to move this summer, and Manchester United is the destination he wants. However, it doesn't sound at the moment like United are putting it out there that they're going to go for two strikers. It definitely feels like the Harry Canes, the Victor Rosamonds are the priorities. And if you don't get those, maybe you have backup plans. I I think I want Rasmus Hoyland, but I think if we're going to buy Rasmus Hoyland, it would be more about having two strikers. That's what I want. And I think Rasmus Hoyland and another striker is what I would like to bring in. Um so as the out and out striker, it puts a lot of pressure on a player in his break breakthrough season. But let's keep an eye on it. Let's keep an eye on it. Um, Harry Kane was still very much in the race for Harry Kane. Um, we might be out of it, really, but we're still in it. We're still sort of like saying, hello, we'd like to buy him. So let's wait and see what happens with that. Uh, with regards to the midfield, good update around that. Um, whilst Declan Rice is a consideration and Rabio is a consideration, Fabrizio said keep Casido in the race as well. Um, Brighton, obviously, this week wrapping up the Alex Simicalista deal to Liverpool. Next week, they'll be starting to have a look at Casido and what happens there. Um, and Manchester United have always been in consideration and have had, you know, you know, there are talks there, whether United develop that, Arsenal have been in the past, Chelsea really want him, they've just missed out on Agate, as Fabrizio was reporting this morning. So, look, I, I don't, Mount, Fabrizio said, very, very concrete, we know that. It's got to be Mount and another midfielder. So, let's see what happens with Casido. Uh, Joshua says, good feeling, but I think only one new player ends up going on tour, says Joshua. Oh, there's plenty of time before the tour, though. And, and, and what I would say is, it's there from Fabrizio. Dean Henderson, very advanced. Expect that to happen really quick. And that's a positive. Um, you got it there from Fabrizio Romano. United have been working on this deal with Forrest for a couple of weeks now. Dean Henderson wants the move. United are, are happy to do the deal. Forrest definitely want the move. It's not just ins and outs. It's, just, it's not just ins. The outs are going to be really important as well. And, and I think sometimes you've got to approach this transfer window in a really experienced way we've been doing this for years you know and i respect a lot of the um intelligence and understanding in the community some people maybe just delve into transfers and don't you know have the years of experience or the knowledge of how it works but the way it works at man united is we, we don't sell players and we buy players late at the moment it looks like we're trying to buy players early and we're trying to sell players early dean henderson looks like he'll be he'll be gone very very quickly that's 20 25 30 million straight in homegrown player straight into the bank. So that's that's good news. And those sort of deals, you don't want to be dwelling on them. Get on with it. Let him go on holiday. Let him know, let him know he's joining Forrest. Good move for him. Good move for us. We move on. That could be really good. Interesting what he said about Harry Maguire as well. Harry Maguire will be having talks with Eric Ten Hag in the next few days before he links up with England to discuss his future. Uh, Harry Maguire will be very concerned about the Euros and his place in the Euros. His fourth choice centre-back um, there's going to be a chat there and surely that chat will be, you know, if offers come in, 
we've got to have a serious chat, Harry. Scott McTominay's more interesting. Um, I mean, McTominay can be sold to Newcastle tomorrow. It could have been sold in January. There's, there'll be people who want McTominay, but it sounds like, and it's always been the case with McTominay, whether you like him or not, he's well liked within the club. Ten Hag likes him, and it's like, but it comes back to what Fabrizio said there. McTominay is probably going to say, I need to play more football. I'm 27 this year. And I don't see where McTominay plays football for Man United unless it's cameos. Casemiro, you need to bring another midfielder in to play the Casemiro role because it can't be McTominay. Mount comes in to back up Ericsson. Where does McTominay get any game time apart from 10 minutes here and there? Um Salibri is stalling on his renewal and Tadibo uh, says Samuel Paul. I think, yeah, I think Fabrizio is more talking about um, centre-backs um, in France, playing in France at the moment, rather than French centre-backs. I'd have to listen to it back. Uh, I did ask Fabrizio about the news about Manchester United and potentially have they pulled out um, the um, of the deal, the... Um, Sorry, just reading a load of shit there. Somebody's just tweeted about Mason Greenwood, but they've got absolutely no authority. So, you know, unless you put in a journalist name next to it, I'm not reading that out. Um, no update on the sale. No pullout from Qatar. Um, and obviously, transfer budgets will be dictated to by how quickly that sale happens. Interesting update on Neymar. He probably will leave PSG this summer, but he's not on Man United's radar at the moment. And that would have to be a change of ownership for Manchester United to come in i.e. what we said a couple of weeks ago, Qatar equals Neymar. Neymar will not be coming to United unless we get Alfani. And even if we did, it might not happen. The Anderlecht keeper you mentioned yesterday is a future number one for Holland. A very good keeper. He'll be our number one of the future if we get him, says Jerome, Jerome T. Green. And feel like McTominay is dependent on Rice Casido, says Nick James. Yeah, maybe. So let's hope we do get Rice or Casido. I did ask the question on the goalkeeper for you. I mean, I think it's not the update that many of you want. Um, the David De Gea contract is very advanced. Man United want it. David De Gea want it. It's not been announced yet. It's expected to be announced. Um, of course, you've got the situation that Fabrizio detailed United are not going to give David De Gea a new contract on more than 200 grand a week and then spend 75 million pounds or euros on Costa. And that is the release clause. And as Fabrizio said, Sporting Lisbon tend to only sell for the release clause. Where are United going to find 60 million pounds for a goalkeeper? They like Costa. They've scouted Costa. They're interested in Scott and Costa, but they haven't got the budget for it because they've got to spend that budget elsewhere. So even I get frustrated by that, though. You know, I've got to say, I, I, even I get frustrated by that. Even even though a goalkeeper would not be my priority with a limited budget, it's got to be spent elsewhere. It is very frustrating that a club like United would go, well, we do like Costa, we've scouted him, he'd be a really good goalkeeper, but we can't afford him, basically. That, that That's the answer, isn't it? So, yeah, I think the Andalek goalkeeper, a cheaper, younger goalkeeper, is probably more likely. I mean, that's the plan I would have gone with anyway. You can't, I, I will admit, if you want Costa, you can't renew David Hayes' contract. So, um but, but that's the situation with the goalkeeper. I think some people would like it to be different, but logically, where do we find the money from to do that? It, 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 it's logically just not going to happen. Um, Declan Rice, nothing is going to happen with him until next week anyway, because he's got that final for West Ham on Wednesday. Also, I, my prediction with Declan Rice is that it won't be a quick deal anyway. I could see Declan Rice deal either happening really quickly because Arsenal have got it done, or... West Ham will play this to their own benefit and this will roll over past the England internationals into early July. So I don't see Declan Rice happening particularly quickly for anybody, let alone United. I think Casido will probably go the same way because there might be competition. Um, Mason Mount obviously looks like it's the quickest deal United can do. We're waiting on Chelsea, who Fabrizio say still want 80 million euros, which is way too much for Manchester United to move in on. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, I think you just got to be careful with the with the transfer window, haven't you? Because I mean, look, ultimately, Eric Ten Hag must be must is the one who who will bear the biggest frustration here. I'm sure he wants to get things done quickly. It's only the fifth of June. I'm relatively comfortable with. I'll talk about Harry Kane now, Mohammed. I'm relatively comfortable with what we're doing, comparable to other years. Um, I think the only time in the last few years we've done a quick deal was Dan James. Fred in or out says half. Um, I think Fred will go. I do think Fred will go. Um, but yeah, I mean, Dan James was a quick deal. And then I think that was the summer of Maguire and Wambasaka, if I'm right. So 
where we're at at the moment, Mason Mount very close, Dean Henderson very close to leaving. That that really could be a thirty million net spend if we get those two two deals done in the next week or so. You know, Dean Henderson goes for about twenty five. You sign for Mason Mount for about fifty five. That's not a terrible start, but you've got to keep that momentum going. Um, I think a lot of our sales will actually happen in July and August, to be fair. There's not many deals that are going to be like Dean Henderson that can happen quickly, but we have got to get motoring on the ins. And Fabrizio saying there that United's priorities are a striker, a midfielder and a centre-back. Well, you know, I feel like we've done this before and then we did get Casemiro, but I always said this, we, we, we never had a CDM for years. Then we bought this holding midfielder in Casemiro and actually we do need another one. I still think it's arguable. Look, we need a striker. I can't argue about that. We definitely do need a striker, but I think we need this. We need this. I would argue, and I've seen a few people on, on Twitter saying it as well, transfers determine whether we finish second or sixth, says Nick. I'd never a true word said. AMT, welcome to the Members Club. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. I think name Nick's absolutely spot on. Um, Alexi McAllister to Liverpool for 40 million quid is ridiculous. Not only is he a good signing, it's a really cheap investment on their... I mean, if Liverpool have got a budget of 150 million, they've just bought Alexi McAllister for 40. They've still got 110 to go and get other midfielders. They're still in the game, aren't they? And I think Nick's right. I think that there really is, probably for the first time in a long time, because Liverpool and Chelsea underperformed and Man United and Newcastle overperformed, I think that there's, and bring Arsenal into that equation, there's five clubs next season with Arsenal, Man United, Newcastle, Chelsea and Liverpool. Their season next year could well be determined by how well they do in the summer. And and, and it's going to be probably the most competitive summer in the Premier League's top six in a long, long time. And you've got to do well. And at the moment, it's first blood Liverpool. That McAllister deal is fantastic. He's a good player, but it's a bloody good price. So, you know, will United be held to ransom? Will we overpay? Will we? How much have we got? These things are really important, and I think United, have, you know, Ten Hag's probably there. Go, it's probably a good job he's bold because he'd be pulling his hair out. At, like, what are we doing, and why are we doing it? I don't think we've got a problem bringing players in. I really don't. I think Man United under Ten Hag, Champions League football. I think we're a, we're an easy sell. It's just whether we've got the money to go and do it. Um, uh, did Avram see with his own eyes how useless the January signings were in the final? He is not suitable to bring United back to the top, says OP. And just on just on the striker situation with Harry Kane, um, I was listening to something on Talk Sport this morning on the Jim White show with Simon Jordan, and they had uh, a guy, a journalist over from La Liga, and they were asking about Harry Kane and uh, is Harry Kane a priority for Real Madrid? Uh, they were basically saying the priority for Real Madrid is killing Mbappe, but the plan was that Benzema would stay another year because he had a year left on his contract and then they would go for Kylian Mbappe. Obviously, Benzema has just left and Ancelotti is basically saying that, look, Karim Benzema was a number nine, but he was a number 10. Like the creative side of Benzema's game was massive. Is there anybody in world football who's a top-class striker who's got a creative side to them? And Real Madrid and Ancelotti's feeling is that Harry Kane is the closest. He's not, I mean, he's not Benzema, but he's the closest in the sense that he is a creative as well as a goal scorer. So Real Madrid are really looking at Harry Kane at the moment. Well, that doesn't help us because Real Madrid might bid high for Harry Kane. And also Spurs would rather sell him to Real Madrid than Man United. So I'd keep an eye on Harry Kane and what happens with Real Madrid because we are, the reason I felt we had a little bit of a chance with Harry Kane was because we're the only we're the open goal, we're the only option. But if, if Real Madrid are in there, United just need to move. Um, Man, United, Man United just need to move quickly. They need to understand what's going on with Harry Kane and then move on from it very, very quickly. I mean, the fact that Real Madrid want Havertz, as Ram says, is quite interesting. But look, at the moment, Mason Mount looks very likely. Kim Min Jae looks very likely. And um, that's going to cost you around 90 million, I suppose. 45, yeah, around 90, 100 million pounds for those two. You can sort of you, you you can sort of you if you get Kim Bin Jay and Mount for a hundred million, you still need that other holding midfielder, seventy million, hundred and seventy striker goalkeeper. You're going to need about two fifty. You're going to need about three hundred million, aren't you? Um, we've got to get moving on the sales. If Kim Bin Jay comes in, 
Maguire or Lindelof have got to go. I know what I'd prefer. Um, if Henderson goes, you've got to bring in a, a younger goalkeeper. You've got to have a plan. We've got to bring a striker in. I think we need two strikers. I really do. I still think, to be honest with you, I still think two. if you can't get Harry Kane, we're never going to pay for Osman. Let's be honest. I, we're never going to pay for Osman. Uh, we're never going to pay for Osman. I like Osman's always been my number one, but we're never going to pay for Osman. We're never going to pay 120 million for Osman. So I think trust the manager and the fact that he's a developer of talent. I would go Hoyland and another 50 million pound striker. That's what I would do. But Benzema's gone to Saudi Arabia, mate. We're not signing in. If Kane went to Madrid, would he put a clause in a Premier League return, says Nick? Well, I mean, look, it's not the Harry Kane stand, but I still think Harry Kane could go to Madrid for two or three years and then come back um, and break the record anyway and, and maybe win a Champions League and a, and a league in Real Madrid. I, I, I think he, I think, I think Harry Kane's um, going to really struggle to come to Manchester United, if I'm being honest. But uh, look, all in all, I'm pretty encouraged from Fabrizio. I wasn't expecting you know, groundbreaking stuff. But Dean Henderson, very close to joining Forrest. That's likely to happen in the next few days. Um, watch out for the French centre-back scene if we don't go for Kim, if Kim Min Jae goes to Newcastle, um, which is interesting because it, at least we're looking at other centre-backs. I can't think for the life of me who in the French league would we'd be looking at, but there's something to look at. Ferguson's not coming. He's staying at Brighton. He won't be moving. Rasmus Hoyland is an interesting option for Manchester United, as we know. Harry Kane looks like it's drifting further and further away. Keep Casido in the race. Harry Maguire is going to hold talks with Ten Hag in the next few days about his future. Probably a few other players as well, including Scott McTominay, possibly Fred as well. Uh, the goalkeeper situation, don't expect Costa. David De Gea is about to sign. We're probably going to go for somebody younger and that Andalek keeper does look interesting. Could Sesco be an option to Stephen? I think once I think once Osman and Kane are out of the way, who anybody could be an option, couldn't they? Uh, Mason Mount's not needed, says Taj, but Mason Mount looks like he will be the quickest deal that Manchester United um, will look at. Uh, Toddy Bow, most likely, says MJ in relation to the centre-backs. Um, but um, look, we'll have to wait and see. I think at the moment, Mason Mount's going to be the first deal. Hoyland, I think, looks like the second deal, if it's going to happen. Kim Min Jae is going to be early, early July. Don't forget Rabio in early July. You can almost line up. So you, you can almost logically line up this summer. Mason Mount soon. Rabio and Kim Min Jae early July. That's your midfield and your centre back sorted, and then a striker at some point. You, you know, and then a goalkeeper. But um, you know, hopefully that's not it. I don't like to predict what our summer transfer window is going to be. But uh, one thing I will say is that regardless. We will be live reacting as a community to all these transfers when they happen and all the news about it. So make sure you subscribe. We've got Fabrizio on over the summer as well. Um, make sure you subscribe and smash a like on the video. I'm back at eight o'clock tonight. Um, I will see you then. Thanks everyone for watching and uh, take care. Interesting. Dean Henderson about to leave then by the looks of it. Mason Mount, very, very concrete. Watch out for French centre-backs. Maguire's going to be talking to Ten Hag in the next few days. And uh, don't close the door on Casido to Manchester United just yet. There are possibilities there. Let's see. Thanks everyone for watching. Take care.